Okay, let's start everybody at 7.01, start the meeting. Shane, I made you co-host. Jason, I also made you a co-host. All righty. Uh, is there any public participation? Hearing none, <clears throat> we're gonna have a slight change of plans here for tonight. Regarding the public, we're gonna start quickly with the public safety uh, building. Bond is still in negotiations with them. We're still uh, in discussions on the on the numbers. Uh, so we really are kind of have nothing new to report at this time. So uh, we're going to uh, just approve the minutes, the invoices first for both the, uh, the school building committee and for the public safety building. And then we will go to the school uh, SMMA is going to make a presentation. <clears throat> so was there any questions regarding the process here tonight? All right. Uh, there'll be nothing further on the public safety building because we, we as indicated, there is still negotiations going on from the bids and from the um, HVAC contractor. And we actually, you know, because there's negotiations, it's not something we can really even talk about uh, because in, uh, at this stage, there's nothing new to report. So the first thing I want to do is the administrative actions for left field. Um, yeah, sure, Joe. Thank you. So the, the first item is the uh, the public safety meeting minutes from November 4th. They were in the package I sent out earlier this morning. Do I hear a motion to accept the minutes as drafted? I move I move that we accept the minutes as drafted. And I will second. Any uh any discussion? Hearing none, any objections to the minutes being approved? Hearing none, the minutes are approved. Thank you. Uh, the second item on the public safety was the invoices. So these were also attached to the uh, package I sent this morning. Uh, there are three invoices uh, this month, um, one for left field, one for HKT, and one for bond totaling $74,403.79. So the first one is the uh, left field invoice number 12. I move, I move that we approve the left field invoice number 12 dated 1031 for the sum of $10,000. I will second. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion. Tom. Yes. Mark. Yes. Bill. Yes. Jason. Yes. Chip. Yes. John. Yes. And I approve it as well. Did I miss anyone? Tim Demers is here. Tim. Sorry, Tim. <laughs> yes. And I thought I saw Wayne Hardacre as well, Joe. Yeah, Wayne, Wayne's not a voting member. I'm not going to vote. Oh, <laughs> but you're going to vote anyway, Wayne. What a country. <laughs> All right. I name. move that we approve HKT Architects invoice 10 022023 dated 11 221 for the sum of 56,132.69. I will second that. Any discussion? Hearing none. Tom? Yes. Mark? Yes. Will? Yes. Jason? Yes. Jim? Yes. John? Yes. And Tim. Yes. And I make it unanimous. I move that we approve bond for pre-construction invoice number five for the sum of uh, dated 1031-21 for the sum of $8,271.10. I will second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Tom. Yes. Mark. Yes. Bill. Yes. Jason. Yes. Jim. Yes. John. Yes. Tim. Yes. And I approve it as well, unanimous. Great, thank you. Um, so Chip, I, I just on the, on the right hand side there, you see balance yeah. after invoice. Is that what you were asking for last month? That's perfect. Does that, that work for you? Okay, great. Yeah, thank I you. mean, and if you wanted to add one more column, just balance to finish, you know, percentage. Uh, I can put but, the percentage but the, in, yeah. Because I just can't remember what the initial, you know. 
Right. Okay. Like for Bond to have only 32,000 left seems small to me, even though they right. only build for 8,000. So I don't know what that is percentage. I don't know what right. percentage they're at yep. now. All right, I can uh, I can get you that. It's, it's right. It, that, that's all, but that's perfect. Yeah. Thank you, Shane. 67%. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> then we move to the um, the, the um, high school. Uh, I sent out the meeting minutes in, in the package last night. Is there so any I move that we accept the meeting minutes of November 4th uh, as written for WMHS. I wasn't there, but I looked at them, so I'll second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Tom. Yes. Is there any objection to the minutes? I'm going to have to do a roll call on minutes. Hearing no objections, the minutes are approved. Thank you. Um, we have two two invoices for the, uh, the high school this month, totaling eighty eight thousand dollars. One from left field and one from SMMA. I move that we approve left fields invoice number five dated 1031 for the sum of $22,000. All right, I'll second that. Any discussion? Hearing none, Tom. Yes. Mark. Yes. Bill. Yes. Jason. Yep. Chip. Yes. John. Yes. Tim. Yes. And I approve it unanimous. I move that we approve SMMA's invoice number 55884, dated 111021 for the sum of $66,000. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Tom. Yes. Mark. Yes. Bill. Yes. Jason. Yes. Jim. Yes. John. Yes. Tim. Yes. All right, thank you very much for that. Uh, as I indicated, we, we really don't have anything to report on the public safety at this time. We will at our next meeting of December 2nd, hopefully. <laughs> thank you. Um, I just included a, uh, a revised schedule for the high school project based on the, uh, the approved schedule last month that pushes it out by a uh, two month cycle for the MSBA board meeting, which will happen at Schematic in December of 2022. Um, so I'm not sure if anybody's got any questions, but this shows a, a more detailed uh, schedule based on what we reviewed last month with uh, PDP going in February 3rd, um, the PSR going into MSBA in early May, and the schematic design going in in October of 2022 for board meeting in December of 22. Um, and we talked a little bit, Joe, we still need to go to the town and discuss the, uh, the town funding. Uh, we talked it would probably be a, a special town meeting sometime in 2023, but we need to plug those in after we consult with the, uh, the town administration. Any questions regarding the schedule? Hearing none. Uh, quick update on the uh, the meetings. Uh, so this week we did have our educational workshop number three on Tuesday night. Uh, last week on Wednesday we had public forum uh, number three where we updated the public on on the workshops to date, the educational visioning. Uh, tonight we're obviously here for the public safety building, uh, our public safety building on the uh, the school. Uh, next week or two weeks time, November 30th, we'll have the fourth and final educational visioning workshop. Uh, we'll be back for another PBC SBC meeting on December 2nd. Uh, we're looking at doing a public forum on December 8th, having one more meeting on December 16th for the public uh, building committee and then rolling into the new year. So uh, this is the schedule as we see it right now. Uh, one, two, three, four more meetings before we submit the P PDP and two public forums. Any questions regarding this schedule? 
Uh, just a quick question from Wayne, the non-voting. Uh, do you anticipate, Shane, any public meetings that we're going to meet in person is not stop these Zoom meetings? Good question. Um, I think that will be up to Joe. I think that, that the governor uh, has extended it out to April where, where Zoom meetings are, are allowed. Um, but that that's that will be something for, for the chairman. Well, they might be allowed, but I think, you know, depending, well, two days ago, I would have said we should probably start getting together in December, but seeing the case count jump from 1,500 to 3,000 overnight, maybe not. Who's making these counts? Oh, this like, is the state. Yeah, that's the state. that's yeah, for another state. meeting. Yeah, oh my God, I, I like I like Zoom as long as possible. I, I believe in safety, not just the public safety building, but also public safety. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, as long as there's increased count, as uh, indicated, um, we're going to continue to Zoom at least in the, in the December meeting. We'll see what happens. In I mean, I think the town would have to make a decision to have us come back in person. Right. And they said, keep Zooming. They haven't given us the option yet. We also have a 20, we have 24 participants in this meeting. I don't know where we would easily meet in person. I, I think Zoom's a lot easier logistically with these big groups at this stage in the game. Yeah. Just, just my input, uh, having been involved in several building committees and several buildings, uh, build, meeting with 20 or 30 or 40 people or 50 people was not a big deal when we, we were building a new high school in North Reading. We met, we met in person. I think it's, it's more effective, in my opinion. Well, my, my, it wasn't, it wasn't COVID, though, Wayne. That's the problem. Because we could probably go to the public safety building and use the community room and comfortably fit 25. Uh, but, you know, we probably need the Galvin Auditorium for 50. I would guess by the time we start construction at any of these projects, we're probably going to be meeting in person, is my guess. But yeah, I would agree with that. Yep. I mean, by the time we start reviewing plans and stuff like that, we'll probably be in person. Yeah. Or it could be hybrid. We could do Zoom and in person. Yeah, right. So when the Galvin was built, was there any Zoom meetings then? No. No, we weren't in COVID, though. There was no COVID. No, I, I, I understand that. It didn't exist. Yeah. Didn't exist. <laughs> Wayne, if you can cure the COVID problem, we'll gladly meet in person. You guys can come over to my house if we can cure the COVID problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. So we'll, we'll, we'll continue to monitor that. Um, that uh, that's all I had for tonight. Um, I think Helen and Phil and Matt from SMMA are on. They had a couple of slides. One, one, of the, uh, one of the slides was included in that package that I sent out last night. Um, so Helen, do you want to take it from here? Sure. Um, happy I'm not sure to. which order you wanted these slides in. Yeah. This is fine. There's, there's just two. And one, um, one thing I can just talk about verbally um, briefly is the existing conditions update. Um, just to sort of continue on some of the um, items that we've already reported on, we really gave a more in-depth presentation at the last PBC meeting um, with, with respect to the building, the architectural, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, engineering. Um, just wanted to update you a little bit more on some of the other activities. Um, I think you did, we also did note that the geoprobes work has been done. We are expecting that report from our uh, geotechnical engineer next week. Uh, same goes for our hazardous materials cons consultants. She did a, a, ver a visual survey, had the AHERA reports. We have the existing conditions building drawings. So that report will be coming soon as well. Um, Geo-environmental uh, phase one was performed on the site and building. Uh, we do have that report in hand. It looks as if a phase two will be recommended based on presence of two underground oil tanks. So more on that. Um, traffic counts uh, have been done on the major intersections close to the school. Um, additional observation took place this past week, the pickup and drop off and understanding the parking situation. And we did also successfully obtain the Metro Tech uh, traffic report. So GM2, our consultant is reviewing that as well. Again, just more information is good. 
Uh, survey work is ongoing. So they started that on November 8th. That's a three to four week um, exercise. So they're right in the middle of, it, of that right now. So um, it's all coming together. These reports should be really starting to roll in starting next week and over the next uh, two to three weeks. So does, do people have questions on um, some of that data? Okay, hearing, hearing none. A, oh, yeah, go question. ahead. Sorry, I'll turn my oh, video yeah. on. Um, so with regards to the hazmat report, that's just a visual inspection, not a physical inspection at this stage? Predominantly, it is a, 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 physic, a visual inspection. There were uh, some small areas uh, at caulking uh, where samples were taken. And so we are expecting those results back. Th those were tests for PCBs. So we are expecting those results as well. And so then at what stage does a physical, after the project is approved, then there's a physical um, inspection done? We get more in depth um, also once we determine which direction we're going. If we're saving the building, it might be a different set of an invest, additional investigations versus if we are demolishing the building. Um, but again, more information will have to be gathered either way. And then can you elaborate on the underground storage tank? Yeah, I, I believe there are two, one quite sizable where we do have good information and then another one that's a thousand gallon tank that um, I think we did just recently unearth some existing drawings that'll help locate that. Um, so again, once our consultant gets that, that that'll um, help her to make some recommendations. And then will probes be done at those areas to determine unsuitable before you know, to determine any any possible exposure for like a yeah. DEP notification. Yeah, depending again on whether you know what uh, what direction the uh, town decides to go in with respect to building right on the same site versus building on one of the other areas of the site that we've identified. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. Um, with that, I think I'm going to um, introduce Phil Poignelli, who I think um, most of you know at this point. He's our educational planner. He's the one who has, uh, along with Shane and uh, Ben Williams from our, from our office, did meet uh, with all of the edge, well, all of the um, uh, departmental heads, uh, superintendent, principal, assistant principals over the course of a week um, and gathered all the programming data. So um, as a result of those meetings, we do have some questions that we really want to dig into a little bit tonight. Um, as Joe said, we do have some uh, need confirmations in this memo. We don't expect the answers this evening, um, but we do want to begin discussions with you on these items. So Phil, are you uh, unmuted? Yes. Great. Good evening. Uh, so uh, the there are uh, five uh, areas that we wanted to talk to you this evening about <clears throat> the uh, uh, an auditorium. Uh, an auditorium is a standard component of um, a, a every high school project, and uh, and the MSBA guidelines for that is to um, provide seating two thirds of the uh, design capacity of the school. So in this case, two thirds of, of a thousand would be a 667 seat uh, auditorium um, plus a plus a stage, excuse me, stage and and support spaces. Um, and <clears throat> during the course of the meetings, there were numerous uh, people who uh, strongly supported this space. Uh, I know that there's been, or we understand that there's been some discussion uh, about whether an auditorium is to be part of it. There's, there's certainly uh, the what is called the black box theater in the existing school. And as we go through uh, the ad reno options, we will certainly look at uh, retaining that space in a new build uh, option, um, the question would be: uh, Does uh, does a 
uh, small theater, go back and place a full size theater or no theater at all. And so we wanted to put that uh, out there. Again, it's a standard uh, component of most every high school. Uh, so Joe, Phil, do you want to take can, these If I can interrupt time? for a second. Sure. Um, Chip Tarbo. Uh, uh, so the question I have for you is how much of history were, you, were discussed in these meetings and how many of the people there understand the history of the black box or the discussion that all took place when we built the auditorium in the Galvin with no MSBA participation? I, I don't think that the high school teachers and administrators um, were that familiar with what took place at, at the Galvin. Uh, the, um, we certainly have uh, understand that uh, the, the, some of the background to the construction of the current theater with, uh, with grant money and fundraising and, uh, and an ex uh, the expenditure uh, that, that took place. Um, uh, and I, I guess the, the, from a programmatic standpoint of what do the teachers uh, feel they need to support the curriculum, uh, there was very strong support for an, a auditorium at this facility. Okay, so I, I, think, it, I think it's important to understand that, that the black box there that there's is pretty much between grants and personal contributions and whatnot. And I, I think it would be detrimental to our entire program to just not understand that or to not recreate it. I guess I'd also like to understand the need for two theaters in town. I mean, we have one, we have one with a stage, we have one with back support, we, we have it. Uh, granted, it's not at this facility, uh, and I can understand that probably being being the biggest concern. However, I, I from a town standpoint, I'm not sure we need two auditoriums. And if we start looking at costs, uh, you know, we're probably only in the 50 to 55 percent uh, reimbursable. So there is a cost to all of this as well. Um, so I, I get the programming discussion, but I'm concerned that we're not, that we're looking at it uh, with blinders on and not as a town-wide situation. I, I, and, and I, which is why we are bringing it to you early on in the, in the, the discussions. Uh, I think that the, uh, I don't know if there are any educators as part of the Zoom uh, or not, but, and I think that um, the educators are the ones that really have to defend the need for the auditorium. We, we heard it from, uh, from the music program, from the theater program, um, from the English language arts and, and many other groups. That's, that's simply what we heard as part of the many meetings we were there for four days of meetings. Um, yeah, so I, I, we we did we we do understand we do understand the the issues that you are bringing up, and so that's why we're putting it in front of you. Yeah, so I just think there there needs to be. I certainly before um, getting behind it would need to really understand the need for two in a town and just how difficult it is to, to do it at the Galvin at this point, that's all. So I, I think there needs to be, it's, it's not a quick and easy, oh sure, throw it in. Right. And uh, just as, I'm, I'm, I'm in the part of, uh, in the process of putting together what's called summary of spaces uh, and I'm do, uh, which defines every space uh, in the school, every usable space in the school and its size. And we are currently running a number of scenarios, not only new construction scenarios and addition and renovation scenarios, but also 
options within each of those so so that the square footage that um, would result from the five issues here are uh, are known in the context of the overall size of the school. So that's work in progress right now. So this is Phil, I have a question. Is the auditorium, what you're saying, 667, that is what the MSBA would put money or does the MSBA never put money towards an auditorium? Or are they saying- No, or, no they, the MSBA, the MSBA would reimburse an auditorium at this at the 667 seat size. At this size. And Chip, you recall at I, Galvin, we had no reimbursement on the auditorium. Co correct, and and still went ahead with it. What is no, the capacity I, yeah. of the Galvin? What is the capacity yeah. of the auditorium? Was the somebody Galvin? was going to ask. And seven twenty, I think. Seven twenty, seven twenty four, or something like that. I just know where the extra wide seats are so I can sit in them. <laughs> uh, Phil, I was, um, I wanted to ask you, uh, does, the, does the MSBA reimburse if they know there's another auditorium in the town at another yes. school? The, you know, this is, a, this is a standalone project. It's, I don't think it would be looked at in the context of uh, the Galvin School. The Galvin School was, as I understand it, reimbursed you know, the, the overall project was reimbursed by, uh, at some percentage, by the MSBA, but not on that square footage. So as, as I would see it, that's really a non-issue. We're looking at this as a standalone project. Uh, and so they wouldn't look, I don't think they would look at this project and say, oh, there's another auditorium in town. We have, we, have a, we have to know that for sure. <laughs> well, I would say that's for sure. <laughs> but um, I also want to make note, I think the renovations in um, to the black box were done, what, 10 years ago, I believe, Shane? Isn't that what you found uh, out? I think it was maybe 2008, 2009, yes, no, about 12 years ago. Okay, it and by the by time the this new school is built, it'll be another four, I mean, they'll be over 15 to 16 years old. So it, would, it wouldn't be like you could, you would want to leave it as is, you would want to make upgrades to it anyway. Yeah, but the problem is, Lynn, this was done, a lot of it was done by personal contributions by individuals. And that is a real concern that I have that, regarding a black box theater that people contributed you know on their own for this that's what built it and the permanent building committee were the ones involved in building it so. yeah this is the i don't say i i was not the one i never contributed so i'm going to say that shouldn't really matter uh you know when you contribute towards something i don't think a promise is given to you that that will remain in place till the end of time uh, the, the theater is not a very, it was good for what the building could hold, it seems. I've been in it a few times. I read this exact opposite of Chip. I saw this and said, of course we need an auditorium. This is, you know, I'm hearing the same thing. So uh, this needs more discussion, it's, it, obviously, but I, I feel opposite. I think, well, of course, we should have an auditorium in our brand new high school. Whether yeah, there's kinda, a I feel not. the same way on that one, Phil, too. I think, you know, if you're going to build a brand yeah. new state of the art high school, you want to have. An auditorium in it regardless of if there's another one in town i grew up in framingham we had six schools with six auditoriums the framingham is also a city yeah well it wasn't when <laughs> yeah. i grew up in it <laughs> it was just the largest little town in the northeast right? large town, yeah. yeah i mean hop on the I, turnpike you know, I, um, I guess i wanted to ask yeah. phil like from your experience on all the projects that you guys have worked on and or maybe even left field you know are, are is anyone building brand new high schools without an auditorium like is that something that's being done anywhere if you're building a state-of-the-art brand new school with all the bells and whistles and you leave out you know is anyone leaving out an auditorium not to my knowledge no, I'm, yeah. I'm not aware of any mine either thanks i i as as i say this is a standard component uh for for uh high schools and msba is completely on board with it um and and i think that that 
the PBC and the uh, and the educators really need to have a discussion about uh, about the the auditorium from the educational side. Yep. I just want to say I'm not going to hash it out tonight. So we got lots <laughs> to get through. I just I just want to go I just want to go that I'm pro for a new auditorium there and, and maybe it doesn't need to be as the flagship auditorium of the town like the Galvin is and maybe it's scaled back technology wise or something but I think an auditorium is definitely needed in the new high school. A good point Mark. Uh, just to let you know I'm going to have to leave because I have another zoom meeting. Yeah, uh, Chip if you can take over running it. If, Possible Jason is a co-host as well. Jason's my technical co-host. Yeah, technical co-host. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 another building committee. You know me. It's uh, you know, I would screw it up anyway. All yeah. right, all right. So talk. See okay. you later. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So let's move. Let's move on to the main gym. And... Can I just ask one last question with regards to the process, though? So obviously the auditorium is a hot button item. So what? after um, summary of spaces is issued by SMMA, what is the next step to close out that discussion? So probably from, from understanding a, of space cost. Well, we have and a, need. we have an education, uh, the, our, our next step is to uh, meet with the educators again, to make sure that we, to confirm the assumptions that we've made in the development of uh, the space summary is correct and uh, and make adjustments from there. And then uh, it, it would then go on to the education um, focus group. And I know there's a, a doodle poll out there right now looking for the, those members of the focus group to find a common day to, to meet. So those summaries of spaces um, would be made available for, for that group. Um, it, this is all public information. So, how, you know, does it, does it flow to you at the same time? I, I, I don't, I don't know how, how that uh, is going to work, but the next step would be to go to the focus group. Okay. Thank you. And at that time, is it sort of discussed amongst the educators that, you know, they've been talking about the challenges of sort of programming um, time with that at the Galvin and rehearsing in the black box and kind of the setup and breakdown time between all of those that at that point that focus group will sort of elaborate on that and then that information will get brought back I'm assuming to the public building committee, the permanent building committee. Yeah, I would. Yes. All right. Thank you. Yeah, and I think it should be noted that the educational um, planning focus group does include PBC members as well. So again, it's just another um, another way to kind of hash through um, and really debate, discuss this issue. Thank you. Just a uh, just a quick comment from a non-voting member. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna look pretty sad as a permanent building committee if we don't build a new high school with an auditorium. And the WCAT studios, my wife is standing across the uh, kitchen from me uh, in, involved in putting that studio together. And it's really been quite a plus for the town to have. And we've been to many shows and performances at the WCAT. Uh, I'm not sure how that's gonna be, is it gonna be demoed or uh, I guess there's no room for it, but uh, 275 seats. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of input from other people that have been involved in this town for years and years, and me included, uh, being involved in uh, building committees and just as a parent and a taxpayer and uh, trying to get the best bang for our buck here. I'm not sure. I, I think an auditorium is a must. I mean, I just, I, I'd love to have everybody come up to the North Reading High School, Middle School for a tour to show what we've done up there. And it's really quite impressive. And it would be really something to see at some point in time to see what other towns have done. My input. 
I, I will say that, and we'll get to the WCAT in a minute. Um, there was no discussion with those, with the two members from WCAT about use of the auditorium itself. Um, so, so when I get to the WCAT, it will be about the studio space itself. Um, I guess we, we didn't necessarily probe them on their use of the auditorium. Uh, I wouldn't doubt at all that they uh, do use it, but I just don't know enough about it to be able to report accurately to you right now. Fair enough. So, moving to the main gym and <clears throat> um, Wakefield has, has been referring to it as a field house. Uh, uh, we refer to it as the main gym or a large gym uh, to most often a field house is uh, a space large enough to put a track inside it, a field house. Uh, most field houses that we've done are nearly double that size. So in the 30,000 square foot range. So I'm going to refer to it as the, as the large gym. Uh, and currently you have uh, the, the 17,000 square foot large gym as well, which was an addition, as well as the original junior high school gym. Um, the, uh, we've been through the curriculum and number of times it's used for PE and uh, we calculate the need for uh, two plus teaching stations, which a 12, uh, which a 12,000 square foot gym um, would provide. Uh, what I missed saying was that the MSBA standard for a school of this size is 12,000 square feet. So 5,000 less than you currently have. Uh, the, our analysis suggests that from a PE standpoint, a physical education standpoint, the 12,000 appears to be adequate. Uh, that's not to say you couldn't petition the MSBA for more square footage, but uh, I'm, 12,000 is what they would automatically approve. Um, the, um, so if, if it were to go larger than that, uh, it would certainly have to be a uh, request with backup from the school and the town that a larger than 12,000 square feet is is in order. Matt, do you have any? Or, or, we, fund it, or we fund it ourselves, right, Phil? I, sometimes so we, they allow we, that. You, 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 would fund it, you would fund on the Old Bridge yourselves anyway, Chip. Right. Uh, if, if it's over 12,000 square feet, MSBA will, will prorate it and, and won't fund the portion that's right. over 12,000. So my concern right. is, is, is we're looking at it strictly from a physical education standpoint. Have we met with the athletic department and gotten a feel for what they think they need? We so have, I think there's we have, two sides to this right. conversation. Right, and we've asked them for additional information. We're waiting for that. So, okay. uh, so I, I will, we, we will venture to, to get more information on that. I'll, I'll also say that going from 12,000 to something larger uh, is not always a matter of simply, we will pay for it ourselves. Uh, MSBA um, has taken different positions on different projects at different times and has uh, in some cases simply denied the ability to go larger and other times they've said, yes, we'll allow you to do it on your own dime. So it's um, it, there's it, it's not simply a matter of uh, we want to we want to build it and and therefore we'll pay for it. So okay, I would just say from a town standpoint, as well as I'm assuming Wakefield has a very strong and uh, good running program track track and field program and 
they are challenged to find indoor spaces to run in. I also think from a town standpoint to have a indoor track for town use or opening it up for the public in the winter to walk or whatever um, is something we should really consider. So my two cents on this point would be we should look at 12,000 square feet and also a field house that could take in and do an indoor track um, and have that discussion. Hey, Chip, when we did the original visioning on this six, seven years ago, wasn't one of the options if building on the baseball field to reuse the existing field house? So that was, that was one of and do a bridge or something like that right. over one lock, yeah. Right. And, and enlarge it. Right. Um, so uh, in, with respect to uh, an indoor track, uh, it's our opinion that 17,000 square feet is not large enough to support an indoor track. That is a um, true statement. And, you know, we, we have, we have an 11th of a mile track at both Swampscott High and at Marblehead High School. And so, and, and um, you get much smaller than that and it's very yeah. difficult to take the turns uh, and concern about shin splints and, and all kinds mm -hmm. of yeah. other things. Those, those are field houses. Those are 30,000 square feet each. Right. And that also gives you a turf field inside the track that then yep. look, you know, all the, all the track stuff can use as well as indoor baseball, as well as indoor lacrosse. I mean, it, from right. an athletic standpoint, it opens up a whole lot of things in New England. <clears throat> but it is an order of magnitude larger than even what you have now. Absolutely. Because we can't fit the track in there. Right. <laughs> it's been looked at. So the, the discussion needs to be is, do we need a field house uh, and do we need a track? And, and, you know, athletically, and what does that do for the town, right? What, if, if we're building this, uh, you know, if we build it, they will come. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities uh, with a space like that for a town like Wakefield that's very active in its athletics. I, I would just caution chip if, if you're looking at a 30,000 square foot field house that you you will get significant pushback from MSBA and even, okay. if, even if you're going to so pay that doesn't yourself, stop just, me. yeah no it doesn't <laughs> stop me. I'm just I'm just putting it out there that as Phil said it, it's not as easy as saying you know we, we'll build it and pay for it and okay but I, the, I, the, I think we can make if we, if it is something that we as a community want to do Mm -hmm. I think we can make a pretty good argument for it. Okay. Um, and it may turn out that we don't, but to not right. look at it would be wrong in my opinion. I think we really need to look at and have that discussion as a community as to whether that's something we need to add. Um, the other thing that athletically that I would add here is that with the renovation of the Vogue, they no longer have a pool. And a pool is something that was very highly used in the community. Um, so talking to the town administrator and others in the town from a community standpoint, uh, as well as an athletic standpoint, there was some, there was at least at this stage, we thought there should be a discussion about a pool. I, I would say that MSBA will not partake in a project with a pool. Yeah, and I think that's a, a, a published um advisory from S msba you know i think when you say partake mean they just they they, they, they will not allow part of their program. they will not allow a pool in this in this project so we have to build a pool and a hockey rink together another time i think so you, not, not you, as part you of you this you can make provisions to yeah. add on to it but okay and we you could do it like we did at galvin at the end of the project where we use contingency for the fields and the and the um, skate. Yeah, I'm not, I, again, I'm not I'm not saying that it's necessary, but I think it again. You know, maybe we look at the gym, either with the with the opportunity to put something on another side of it, pool in the future if we wanted to do it as a town. But again, to not look at the community needs when we're building this 
brand new space and brand new high school. Um, I think we just need to talk about it and think about it. And doesn't mean that we're going to do it. And especially if they won't partake in it. <laughs> yeah. So how do we talk about it if we don't have the information on it? Like, I feel like we need to plan this project to what the MSBA is going to reimburse us for at a base. And then there's some extras like, you know, because like making it bigger, or, you know, like we should, of course, be looking at a 12,000 square foot gym because that's what the MSBA is going to reimburse us for. Right. Like, so that's like a base decision, I think. And then if we want to go bigger or, you know, or, or something, then how do we get that information and who in the community needs to discuss it? Isn't it our decision uh, in this commission, in this committee on whether or not we ask for like, how big of a discussion does this get? And we just tread water for, for how long? And, and so I just, I don't understand the design process with these questions because there's certain things in all of these MSBA will pay for this. And we're talking about, oh, it'd be great not to have an auditorium. It'd be great to have a bigger field house. It'd be great to have a pool. Like, how do we not like blow this up to a point where we forget what we're trying to make a decision on, I guess, on a big project like this? Because this is my first time going through a big one like this, so. so. So Phil, I can tell you what we did in the past and that's all I have is that you put it all on the table to begin with. And it's the designer's fun challenge to say, if we did this, it would look like this. If we did this, it would look like that. If you don't do this, you do that. And then it's, it's our OPM's great communication with the MSBA to say, hey, we're thinking about this. What do you think? And they'll get the feedback back that says, you know, we did it with the auditorium at the Galvin. Hey, we need an auditorium. The high school doesn't have one. It's not something that's normally done at a middle school. So we had to go to the MSBA and say, will you allow us to do it? They then came back and said, yeah, it can be part of the square footage, but we're not paying for it. Um, and so those are the discussions. So what we are at such an elementary stage, it's put everything on the table and then start taking things off because either the MSBA won't fund it or we don't need it as a community or whatever the decisions are that, that need to be made to go forward. But this is the time to discuss it, not at the end and say, oh, wouldn't it have been nice? Oh, they would have allowed a pool. Oh, geez. Or yeah. geez, they would have allowed a field house. Why didn't we put an indoor track in? Okay, so when this, I, I guess I was reading this memorandum a little, it, when, when SMMA is asking for needing confirmation, are it's you looking to start the discussion? Con, not tonight. You're not looking oh, for God. it. We're, we're, not, no, we're, not not looking, we're not looking for it tonight, but, Got it. but okay, we're not, that's but, but it can't, it can't come three months from now. I, right. Like what's the timeline on, right. So Phil, to that point, and I guess where I was going was where, how long do we have to explore I agree with everything Chip said. This is the time, you know, you put everything on. How how quickly does that happen uh, for us to present eight, eight you know, however remember many options we can think of, and then for I, I us to be able to make a decision. I turned to Lynn or Shane on that. Uh, I, I, I think we, we need to have it in, in the PDP when it goes in in uh, early February. Um, but that said, you know, if we put some of these things in where we're so far over the square footage, MSBA may come back and say, you know, we're not going to allow you to further investigate or further study that in, in the PSR stage. Um, so, you know, absolutely everything needs to be in at PDP. Uh, I don't think we'll be able to add it in after PDP, but simply adding it in a PDP and recommending that we, we study it further in PSR does not guarantee that MSBA will allow us to do that. But you would at least know at that point whether or not they would support it or not, and whether or not you, you know, need to ask for a meeting with them to see how far you can push it. Got it. Correct. So um, I would, I would maybe okay. if I could just jump back to to maybe I misunderstood you, Chip. But um, in in that MSBA space summary that that Phil is returning referring to, there, there's different categories of space. There's there's academic space. There's there's gymnasium. There's auditorium. There's there's art. There's science. We we won't be allowed to take you know if we don't do an auditorium, we won't be allowed to simply take that auditorium square footage and put it into a gym. Even within that that space summary, we have to stay within the limits right. of each category. 
Well, I would say from the conversation tonight and the conversation with the educators, it was only the two old farts in the room that had a problem with the auditorium. So given, given that, that we need to, you know, I can be persuaded occasionally, um, I'm probably in favor of an auditorium at this point. So I, I, because I've heard educationally, and it, I can only imagine what it's like to try to move high school kids to the Galvin and put a show on. I, I'm sure it's not good. So, so given that, the other stuff I bring up is that I just want it to be brought up and be put on the table so that it can be thought about. Well, I, I'll turn to Matt or Helen, but I would think that, you know, if, if, we were, if you were to ask us to you know, put a, a box on the design that represents a square footage uh, and how that integrates with the rest of the building, um, there's a lot to that. And uh, so, you know, decisions... Yep. You know, but that's why you big, guys are architects. <laughs> these, right, but these big decisions take time to then um, f finish out. So if the PDP is due in, in early February, we're, we're talking about, you know, late December, first of the year kind of decision to, to say, we, wanna, uh, we want some big piece of square footage included in the project. Okay. I mean, I think the biggest piece of square footage Can I ask, can I ask, can yeah, I ask just... a question about the PDP and how it relates to SMMA's process? When we say we want a 30,000 square foot area devoted to athletics, do you, does SMMA have to go through space planning to have that correlate and relate to all the other spaces that they are then designing? Is there real design time put into accommodating a 30,000 square foot space or is it purely something that's put on a spreadsheet from left field that says we would like a 30,000 square foot um, athletic facility? Yeah, I think somewhere, it's somewhere in the middle, in the middle. I'd say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Matt, Matt, can you weigh in on that? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, I think the biggest impact is not necessarily in terms of adjacencies of, of the building, but it's really in terms of the site design. Um, it, it is about double in terms of the size, and it is, it is the largest single space that's um, that we accommodate for when we're doing early layout and planning. So it, it could force us to um, think about moving um, a piece of circulation, um, an athletic field, something like it, it has that much um, sort of gravity to it in terms of how we might be laying things out. So it, it is impactful in the design process. Um, it, and I think that the key to sort of getting um, a decision on that is, I think, something that Chip mentioned, uh, which is having a conversation, an informal conversation with the MSBA. Once we have a, an idea of the full sort of uh, menu of things that we want to be considering, to, let's get a read from them. They're very uh, willing to talk with us during the process so that we don't have to get to the end of the PDP, submit something that they're, that they're going to turn around and just say, no, that's not viable. Uh, yeah, that, that's the point I was just going to make before Liz spoke there, that, that if, if, you know, we are leaning towards a 30,000 square foot field house, you know, when, when we submit the PDP, it should not be the first time the MSBA here or see this. And that we'll, we'll need to have a, a conversation with them before that time. I mean, and, and I think that's a great way to go because then it, then it even might just end the conversation for us very quickly. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We're out of time. All so right. What's the Let's... timing of that informal um, discussion? Um, I, I think maybe, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get through tonight. Maybe we'll come back to the next meeting uh, on December 2nd and sometime shortly after that, at least start to float it out there to MSBA. Hey, you know, we're thinking of this. What do you think of it? Is it going to fly? Is it going to be a non-negotiable? Absolutely not. Um, but, you know, certainly shouldn't be, shouldn't be when we submit the PDP uh, is the first time. That right. MSBA and there may be more things like the next discussion that need to go on those, on the, uh, you know, will it fly discussion. So why don't Absolutely. we move on? So let's so let's go to WCAT, and you know, the, it, 
WCAT, you know far more than I, uh, that it's a long time tenant uh, at the high school. Uh, they occupy about 3,800 square feet. This, these are approximate numbers. Uh, and we met, we met with uh, two members. Um, I think it's John McDermott and Brian uh, McCa McCabry uh, and to talk about WCAT. And they said that they felt they needed the addition of the adjacent high bay space uh, moving forward. So that would be a total of about 5,200 square feet. Uh, again, this is, there's not much of a relationship between currently, there has been in the past, um, but currently there's not a, a lot of relationship between WCAT and the high school from a curriculum side. Um, they both suggested that they were open to increasing that, but, but it's not currently part of it. Um, and again, this is something just like a field house that would have to be uh, 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 floated by the uh, the MSBA um, in in a renovation. Could it stay in place? Very likely could. There's enough square footage in the building. <clears throat> uh, again, no money could be no MSBA money would likely be able to be spent on it. Uh, but if it were a new building, uh, would, it would it be possible to uh, add some 5,000 square feet uh, to the project? Um, the, 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 the initial response would be unlikely, uh, although uh, Matt has recent experience in Somerville where the local TV station um, was allowed to occupy part of the new high school. Yeah, just to elaborate on that a bit, Phil, um, I think the key to MSBA being on board with it, and again, this is just conjecture, no one can predict exactly what they're going to agree to, um, is really the collaboration <laughs> between the school um, and WCAT in terms of um, sharing some of their spaces. Um, and so in Somerville, what we did was shared the studio itself um, there were separate control booths um, that fronted onto the studio from different walls. Um, and sort of the broadcasting uh, signals could be routed in either direction. <laughs> um, but it was really that shared approach um, that was the, the lion's share of the square footage, um, which is what allowed us to do it there. So I do think that that, that shared collaboration is the key. And, and I, Matt or Phil, has there been any discussion uh, at the educational workshops about this shared collaborative? Because I know we've tried it in the past, but uh, I don't think we're doing any right now. And um, there, there is, there is no disturbing, but. Yeah, to my knowledge there and, and discussion, there is none going on currently. Um, and uh, um, as I said, both, both suggested that they were open to having it take place, but no one was seemed to be making any steps in that direction. Okay, and is well, what it... I heard in my focus group um, that included in different in different in different focus groups that I was in, um, and it included um, at different times the superintendent, um, head of our media center, our principal, they all made um, references to wanting to relate STEM and STEAM to the media center uh, to, and the media center to the TV studio. Um, and I didn't know if making those relationships um, obvious on the application, if that would enable funding to be, you know, pushed towards the studio, if it was STEM and STEAM related. So the, the opportunity to do that is in the writing of the education plan, which is something that the superintendent and Amy and, uh, and their team uh, are currently working on. Uh, so the education plan is, is a document, typically a rather substantial document that talks about how education takes place currently in the school and the vision for 
uh, how education will take place in the future. And so the, uh, the, that has to be uh, the, the, the way in which that sharing takes place has to be articulated uh, in the education plan itself. Uh, and that really is the key, that, that document is the key to convincing MSBA of whether or not something can take place or not. I wonder if I could jump in here, Phil. Um, my name is Tom Stapleton, and I was the past executive director of WCT for about 15 years. Uh, I've been keeping quiet tonight because I'm trying to make sure that I hear everything that people are talking. It was unfortunate that I was not invited into that meeting with Ian McDermott and Brian McCoubrey because uh, I purposely decided to get on this uh, program to see what I can do to help uh, WCT get along. So I hope I'm not speaking out of turn from anybody, but basically, as it was decided, we would love to stay where we are. There's no question about that because we have invested a ton of money in all kinds of equipment and keeping up to, keeping up to date with the latest um, the cameras and sound equipment. And then you have your different uh, uh, WCA, I mean, uh, different communities uh, that are involved too. So to-, to um, Talking about the WCHE. Excuse me? Oh, okay, I thought somebody said something. Anyways, so um, to have to move to another location um, if we couldn't get involved with the, the, new, the new school, uh, it would cost a tremendous amount of money that, um, that WCT doesn't really have and it has enough to support themselves. But to redo a whole studio again, be hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, so the thought was that we'd stay where we are. I know this is something that came up and build around it. Now, I was involved in the, the programs last, uh, I think it was Tuesday, and uh, <clears throat> there were many scenarios of the different schools that they'd um, worked on. And there was one that they did a rehab with, which looked pretty good to me. Um, again, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn. I was not involved in that meeting, but I have a pretty good idea of what they're looking for. Um, the studio itself is, is great space for us. Um, there is another piece of property that uh, we'd like to get a hold of. I think you went over that and it's adjacent to it, which would help us out a lot in that area. Um, so uh, I've, been, I've been thinking about this and listening to everything over the past well, six months or whatever it is that we've been going through this. And I finally realized uh, and, and uh, I must admit that Chip Tarbell was very uh, helpful to us at the Galvin when we had the, um, the this control room upstairs, uh, which, which is something that if, if the new school has an auditorium, uh, we would need to have that done there also. And, um, and that gives us the ability to broadcast them uh, on different events. So what I'm trying to say is um, I feel that uh, the, they were going in the right direction. And I'm very happy that we met with the two people at uh, WCAT. And um, so I, I really feel that uh, if we could stay where we are, that would be beneficial to us. And we could go on broadcasting. Uh, we like to be, we, I keep using we, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the uh, director there anymore. So bear with me. Um, we like to keep, like to, keep it uh, to the point where WCAT is more of a, a television studio that broadcasts. The high school has their own studio, but that is more of a learning, uh, learning place right there. And we have tried in the past, the past many years, I've had people from the uh, high school would come in and we uh, show them how to run cameras and actually see what it's like to run a professional studio. And it's worked out pretty well. And uh, and in the past, things have changed a bit, which is fine. And um, so uh, 
we have other people that come in now that volunteer the service as far as. And, and every time uh, something new comes on the market, some piece of equipment, uh, we manage to try and uh, increase our ability to become more um, efficient for the town, and so on like that. We've just been um, uh, uh, high definition with uh, RCN, which is a big step for us. And um, again, I hope I'm not talking out of turn, but uh, people aren't talking to me, so that's <laughs> the way it goes. So, um, and that's kind of my feeling. And, and, and uh, I barely enjoyed the process um, that we've gone through with Phil and, and the, the other people. So that's kind of where I stand right now. And um, let's see what happens. I, I'm going to ask, uh, uh, is, would this be in the same category of if you allowed us to build it, we would pay for it ourselves? Would the town, do you believe the, as a committee that the town would support that? Is, that? is that the kind of thing that should go to the MSBA with a sense of, of town support? And I know you're just speculating. That would be great, in my opinion. That would be I, great. Tom, Tom I'd, I'd jump in. I, I think this is, you know, one of the, you know, when when Liz asked what's what's the process, I think this is one of the conversations that we need to have with the MSBA is like, this has always been in the school. Can it be in the school? I do think we need to somehow... It, it bothers me, Tom, that, that there isn't more collaboration between the two of, of shared studio space or stuff like that. It, it seems to me such a natural connection. Yeah. Um, so I, I think we just need to look at that. But I think, again, to, to Shane's point, this, or, or to Phil's point, that you know, this is one of the topics because you know, I don't know what happens if we build a new school and WCAT isn't part of it. Um, you know, that, that's a whole nother discussion from a community standpoint, you know, WCAT doesn't have the pockets to, to go rent or buy a building and create a new studio. So, so I think, you know, it needs to be, you know, when you say, does this get included in the new addition or renovation summaries? Yeah, I think it does until the MSBA tells us that it can't. Yeah. Um, and then we just have to understand you know, what that means to the town and the costs of that with it. But yeah, I. So the question, the question that I would have for you and, and, and is, is a legal one. And I don't think, I'm not sure anyone on this call could, could answer that. Maybe you can, but they are a 501 C3, as I understand it. Right. And can, and can the tax base support a 501c3 because to to include it in the project um it would would I mean, we can ask we can ask i'll i'll reach out to town council and ask that question okay okay i think we I think have that's a very a smart town councilor so i can that's a baseline question yeah yeah i mean we support it now yeah. yeah. Right. But do we build it a new building? I think. I, I think that's a critical question. Yeah. I'll ask Tom Muller. It, it, it's such a, a unique relationship that's been there out of just share convenience and location. But if we're looking at a brand new school, let's say, let's put the renovation aside for a second because that's probably easier to absorb this if we're staying in the space. But let's say it's a new space. How do we sell a TV station? is part of the high school project, which is we're charged to build a high school, not a TV station. So that's why I'm, you a have to, I'm, I'm a little confused have to there. find some, some collaboration between the two. I know, but I feel like that collaboration needs to be shown that there is and not like 11th hour. But I, if I was the MSBA, I'd be looking for a little more than uh, just we're going to be doing this. But uh, I just questioned on a high school project, why we're discussing a TV studio. I know, I know it's because they're there now, but in reality, we're building a high school, right? So 
I, I, I think that legal question is so critical to see if there if, if this is even in our ability to do anything with. Our hands may be tied. Well, I think that so, it's like a process that we have to go through, and I'm just putting my thoughts yeah. out there. Because Let's talk them. about the next fun one. So the, the next one is the <laughs> uh, uh, Wakefield Public Schools central office, and they occupy about 2,200 square feet of the existing building. Um, I have uh, MSBA, uh, to my experience, takes a pretty firm stand on saying that uh, central office space is not allowed in a MSBA project. Uh, and I'd look to Shane and, and Lynn for their experience on that. Uh, so this is a this is a heads up that uh, does is there another space in place in town where they might go uh, or what is what does the town see as a future for central office? And when you've had conversations with the superintendent, what where does he stand on this? We we actually didn't talk about this. Okay, so I think that would be a great place to start. Yeah, um, with Doug and 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 uh, you have a Wednesday morning leadership meeting, right? Are you part of that, Phil? I was. Or Matt or whoever whoever on SMA is yes. part of that. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so who, you, this is a great. Wednesday morning conversation. Okay. okay. Is there a spot in town? We have other schools that are vacant that maybe they're thinking about it. Um, but again, you know, we got this is start with that and then see where we go. Okay. The last item on the list is the Governor John Volpe archives. I, I don't know how many people are familiar with that. It is a single room in the current library. Uh, we spent four days in that space uh, <laughs> and, and, uh, and it consists of two uh, activities. One is a conference table uh, with chairs and lots and lots of memorabilia on the walls framed, um, you know, letter from Lyndon Johnson uh, congratulating him on the dedication of of the archives and photographs with him all through his career. So it's it's a real important piece of town memorabilia. Uh, so that's one part of it. The other part is uh, there's a back portion of it that's about 150 square feet that is his archives, and it's just. Uh, 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 shelving units with bankers boxes on them. And um, I'm told that there is all kinds of very significant information in there. Uh, the, the Because it's one space, the space is typically kept locked. Uh, what I've said to the school is that the conference area and the memorabilia uh, is something that could easily be incorporated into the new library uh, and it has either as a room or as a simple alcove uh, within the library. So being able to take all of that memorabilia and uh, essentially conference room like space is can simply be done. Um, we would suggest that someone understand what's in those archive boxes and that a special room, locked room be uh, established to support um, and store uh, what we're told is very important memorabilia to his legacy and the town. Um, I also just wanna mention that when we moved General Galvin's some of his memorabilia is there too. He had a whole library section. So that was sent to uh, the high school. So that could be also what's in that locked room. Okay. Yeah, so 
Um, unfortunately, with Joe not being on here, his wife, he's very involved in the historical aspect of things and his wife is head of the historical group. So um, he has a ton of knowledge on this stuff. Um, I would say, you know, it's certainly, I think it's great for high schoolers to understand history and to be part of it, and to have this preserved. So um, again, it's a discussion that needs to take place, but I would think you need to keep thinking about it. And do we build libraries anymore? Absolutely. Or are they media centers? Well, they're media centers. Okay. Because there's not an encyclopedia to be had anywhere in a school anymore, is there? Uh, no, reference, <laughs> reference sections, reference sections uh, have been reduced by 90 plus percent uh, because it's all online. Uh, right. But, but, uh, uh, but the there's still a need for uh, uh, both um, uh, fiction and nonfiction books. They're looking, you know, they have you have a collection of somewhere around fifteen thousand volumes. I have it in our our, our notes somewhere of what the desire is. Um, but so there is a need for uh, thousands of volumes of books. Still. Okay, and but but there's also libraries or media centers today are used. They're no longer what I call shush libraries. You know, <laughs> librarian walking around shushing people to keep quiet. They are active uh, spaces that uh, uh, that are really set up for collab both research and and uh, individual and group work. It's we typically include uh, uh, collaboration rooms within the spaces. So the space is needed and it's just used uh, a lot differently than it was 20 years ago. And I will say that the MSBA size is about half of what you currently have. So it's it's not a significantly large space. I think it's six thousand, and you now have thirteen thousand, somewhere in that order of magnitude. Great. So, just just from a quick historic perspective, on the uh, Volpe Library uh, archives, when I was the facilities director in Wakefield back in the late nineties, I know I was involved in setting that archive room up in the high school library, and we had some Volpe family members there. It was quite a Coup for the town to get those, because he was the governor, a man of note for the state, to get those, uh, to get his uh, historic documents uh, for the town of Wakefield. So I think it should be at some point in time. It's, I know it didn't take a lot of area, but uh, to have something <clears throat> on the site that, you know, from a former governor and a man of note, to have that in the town would be a real coup for us and to keep it going, I think would be a good idea. I think he was governor on multiple occasions uh, and he was secretary of transportation and had a lot of other titles along the way. Yep. All right. That's, well, that's well, it. I, I, I thought, I, you know, that, that we wanted to, wanted to get all of these issues in front of you. Um, uh, you know, that one's, that one's the easiest one to solve. Um, but the others are, important that that you and the larger community and the school uh, find a way of uh, getting to consensus on. Well, I think you got, you heard enough from me tonight, probably on some of that. I think the central office, you have to have that conversation with the leadership group to see what they're thinking. Yep. Um, I think CAT will find out from Tom Mullen whether we can support a 501c3 if that's even something we can do. And secondly, then if the MSBA would do it. Uh, it sounds to me like an auditorium is, is something that educationally is needed from everything I heard. And, you know, I look to Jason and Phil and Mark and all the others that spoke tonight that they're the ones whose kids are going through this thing. Mine are done. So if they feel that, that it's an auditorium is necessary, I would bet that the majority of the 
young adults and young families in town feel it's necessary, Phil included. Um, so I think it, I think the probably the biggest one to to kind of weigh and and maybe during you can even do this during the during those Wednesday morning is is float the field house question by whether an indoor track is something that wants to be looked at or not. Um, so and then and then I guess the the question is is if only a one twelve thousand square foot gym is allowed. You know, what do we, from an athletic standpoint, what do you do with gymnastics? How do you coordinate basketball and gymnastics? You know, that having the two gyms now, gymnastics can stay set up. I mean, the having to pull that stuff in and out is a, is a nightmare on a daily basis. Um, so again, you know, is it, is it two, two basketball size court spaces, combined I lots of different options um uh, but I I hopefully we gave you some some direction tonight that can help you move forward yes thank or you. sideways at least <laughs> thank you all right what's next um so uh Helen and as my major sent over a list again this is you know very preliminary uh, I think we've talked in the past about options and what options are and what we need to look at as part of the study. Um, so Helen, if you want to go through this quickly, this is sort of very preliminary list of, of what those options may be. Yep. So this, this kind of uh, gets to, to um, Liz's question earlier about, is this just a cost that we need to figure out or what impacts do some of these decisions have on the actual site? So the way that we are looking at this is um, first and foremost, uh, we're calling option one, we are required by the MSBA to look at what it would take to just simply bring the building up to code. That's it. No, no <laughs> additions, no, it's the baseline, right? They wanna understand um, what that baseline would be. Going from there, we've, we've sort of thought about this in, in three sort of uh, spatial, site spatial buckets, right? Renovation addition, you know, where the building is right now, what can we do? And we have an idea right now of up to four different schemes we're thinking about. And those are sort of the, the general descriptions of each. I've added some columns at the end, understanding that, and I don't have one for real field, real, large size field house yet, Chip, but um, <laughs> some of these, you know, talk, talk to um, the field house that exists now, we'll call it the main gym. Um, and in addition, renovation, all of the, those schemes that we're looking at, those four, we renovate and retain the existing main gym. Full auditorium or not auditorium, I think we did get some good input tonight, but certainly that's been something that's been a little bit up in the air. But as we move away from a re renovation addition and look in, look at the um, Beasley Oval was another area that we looked at for building the new building. Um, you know, we'd, we'd have three options there, one of which would be considering a model school. Model school is, is you can't really deviate much from the program, so that would be a full auditorium. The other options that we might look at on Beasley Oval, uh, new construction design for optimal fit, um, we could consider the different theater options. And again, I, I think we can add a column here, you know, where could we consider putting a field house if that's something the town desires to do. And then finally, the third site, I understand it's all one site, but piece of the site that we're considering is Walsh Field. Um, and again, similar kinds of approach. One would be looking at the model school. We have Grafton High School is an approved model school at the MSBA. So fitting that on the site, seeing how it works um, and along with two um, totally new designs in that location. So that's kind of where we're heading with respect Helen, to options and variations. Helen, there's a lot of people that don't I would say, uh -huh. don't understand what the model school is. Can you take yep. two minutes and explain what that option is to sure. people so they understand what you're talking about? Yeah, absolutely. So the MSBA offers um, what it calls the model school program. It has 
approved a certain number of designs for each uh, sort of scale of schools. So there's elementary schools, there's middle schools, there's high schools. Uh, SMMA does have an approved model with the MSBA, which means that if a community does decide they want to use a model, they'd have to hire us. And luckily you have us already, if that's the direction you want to go. Um, it does not allow for much variation on what that model is. So again, it probably be good for us to get you more information about Grafton High School. And it is uh, something we're looking to see if we can uh, get the leadership team to take a tour of. Um, but what it does is because it's a design, it's a, it's a building that's designed already. Um, the, the, the time in design is shortened, right? Because it's less time for us to um, develop, develop the design pieces. Um, it, so it does save some money, especially and time in the design phases specifically. There are always site conditions that will affect the building. So of course those are allowed to be considered, um, but pretty much with the model, you, you, get, you get the model. So, um, you know, again, we need to test fit it, see how it works on, on these two uh, pieces of your site. So does that, that make sense? Yeah, yeah go and, ahead, Phil. And, and there, there, there may be some educational compromises that need to be made when fitting into that model. So for example, Grafton has two uh, music rooms and it appears as though uh, there's going to be a need for three music rooms. Well, the MSBA would say, sorry, you're gonna have to fit into two. Uh, there's a certain number of classrooms and we are calculating the number of classrooms we believe that are necessary, um, whether, if you go with the model, you get the number of classrooms that they've, that the model has, not necessarily the exact number that you need. Um, so there, and it's gonna be very close, but it's not going to be right on. So I think that's something that uh, the this, this school would have to understand. And other than design savings and, um, time savings. Are there other benefits? Do they participate more in a model school? No, it would, so, it so what would be so, the reimbursement rate stays the same. There used to be added points, but no so longer. If the reimbursement stays the same, what's, mm -hmm. what's the true benefit if we, if to Phil's point, you have to modify your educational stand? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank yeah. you. You set it yep. up. <laughs> <laughs> we looked at it with the Galvin. It didn't work. We get the question at town meeting every yeah. time. Have we yep. looked at it? Yes. Um, I think people believe that there's a greater savings mm -hmm. based on going with a model school, but I, but I, I think. Yeah, to your point, Chip, that's exactly right. What are the sacrifices then, right? Um, so once we get the space summary in really good shape and understand that we have it right from a standpoint of the programming that Phil and others have done, um, we've got the, the, the numbers, the, the spaces and the sizes. How does it compare to Grafton? You know, how many sacrifices might need to be made? I think that's, that's the next step. But again, we do need to advance that space summary for you. Maybe just one one quick important point to add there, uh, because it is the model school. All these things that we were just talking about, um, the answers are already predetermined. There would not be <laughs> there would not be any WCAT studio. Uh, there would not be an enormous field house. There would be a regular um, twelve thousand square foot gym. Um, all those things again are sort of per the model. Thanks. So, do you have to defend not doing a model school? based on the educational plan? I mean, does the MSBA, I know they want you to do a model school, right? Do you have to defend not doing it? As you have to defend a renovation I, or- No, it would be plan. a choice that you might want to make in order to save money potentially. But they're, sound, not, they're not necessarily they, pushing it. No. They, 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 they okay. did specifically though, tell us that we had to put the model school in, in the RFS for the design services. So we will, I wouldn't say defend it, Chip, but we will have to say we looked at it and, you know, we decided not to, to proceed 
uh, with that as one of the, the options. For these reasons. Yeah. And, and yeah. Okay. That, that will be it. Great. All right. The Patriots are about to start. What else is there? Um, so, so Important just, uh, Helen, bef before we wrap up, so are we going to revisit this matrix now with, with a full auditorium in some of these renovation options? If I were you, I would. From what okay. I heard tonight, so, it would be hard to defend not doing it. All right. So, that's so really maybe helpful. Thank you, yeah. uh, Helen. We'll, we'll we'll get together and, and take another look at this. Exactly. Yeah. And then I guess the other piece, though, but Chip added something, and that was a full field house. So, right. <laughs> we'll, we'll and, and again, that my too. my ad was to see if it's possible. Absolutely. And yes. whether yeah. it even makes sense. So that's yeah. all. It's, it's just yeah. you know this is the time to do that. Absolutely. Okay. Is there, is there a way to retain the field house on the new construction or is it just better off to do a new field house at, with the new construction? Or, I mean, mm -hmm. I know they'd be separated maybe by a road for one of the options, but I mean, if, it, if we have a working field house now, which right. I don't know if that's a case or not, but something <laughs> retaining is, yeah. could be an option. Yes, and um, I don't know, Matt, if you have any more insight insider information on that he's been more um closely associated with the design team's work yeah no i, I think certainly um a pair of the options um, that are addition renovation focused just on salvaging the existing field house and reusing it um it, it will immediately allow you to get something larger than the baseline twelve thousand square foot new construction gym so to, if if that's what is uh, easily allowed it, it's a it's a good option to explore. Um, and I think certainly one option is probably gonna be similar to what I heard discussed um, earlier this evening. Um, if you're leaving Hemlock Street where it needs to be, um, you have to cross over it to be able to, be able to build on uh, the Walshfield site. So that, that's a strategy that we'll still um, investigate. Um, but if, if Hemlock can be um, rerouted in some fashion, then you could build adjacent to that um, and have the, the whole, um, new facility is still an addition renovation, primarily addition, but the field house itself would be a renovation scope. Well, thanks. All fun things to think about. Absolutely. Great. Great. Does that anything else? Anything sure. else, Jane, from your standpoint? Uh, no, just so ne next meeting, just a reminder, uh, December 2nd, um, and those of you who will be on the visioning meeting on, uh, on November 30th. Anybody else have anything to add, questions? Actually, I yeah. do, Shane, you sent an email about the design focus groups that Lorraine would be in touch with us, and I haven't received yeah. anything from her. Is that, did I miss something, or is it just, it's um, they're forthcoming? I believe they went out today, Mark. Which group were you on, Mark? Uh, I think I'm in exterior and interior planning. Okay. And the site design. Same here. Um, Phil Renzi, yeah. Phil Renzi, same same group. Okay. I haven't heard anything yet. Either. Can you check? Same your, with um, me. Check your junk yeah, folders. Uh, it came out through a do a doodle. I was so going to say it's a doodle. It's, a doodle. it's not from her. Yeah, it mine ended up in my other inbox, not oh. my junk box. But um, if you um, give a look, I do have um, that. Yes, from they Doodle. all yep. went out. Okay, they did yeah. all go out today. Yep. Okay. Damn. Thank you. Yeah. I did. I did hear from Doodle today. There's an MEP meeting on the second of December, same as our regular night, I guess. Oh, there's several options, so you kind of have to scroll through the. Oh, yeah, I did. I did. I put yeah. down. I put okay. Down three to five and seven to nine on the second of December. Oh no, there's actually set options in those polls, and all of these are meant to be daytime meetings. So, um, hmm. who, do, who do I get in touch with? I, I can't find it in my email. Okay. So. <laughs> you get. Yeah, you can I don't have anything tell. either. Okay, no. nothing for Mark or Phil. Okay. I found mine in my spam folder. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'll yeah. check mine now. I'm okay. there now. I don't see it, but uh, okay. Okay, good question on Mark. I was going to ask the same thing. All um, right. 
Hey, oh, Jeff, there it is. In the D, anything in the DPW? Oh. Or we, can we move on to it? Are we done with high school? Or We're done with high school, I think, unless somebody else has any questions. I can tell you there's nothing on DPW at this point. We have no idea after our last meeting. They were supposed to get back to us and then- They were we supposed to start anything. looking at the site, uh, the yeah. site as is, as compared to taking right. property that we don't have any rights to. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. So we haven't heard anything. You Okay, so that's- We have not. Kind of, okay. Yeah. I think we have our, our plates full enough, which is why I haven't been poking the bear a whole lot. Mark. Okay. Anybody, anything else? Lynn, Shane? Well said, thank you. All right, to everybody that came tonight, thank you very much. All great conversation, and we will proceed. Thanks, guys. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye.